Hi everybody, so we are going to talk a little bit more about camera fundamentals in Camera Fundamentals 3, and we're gonna start off talking about depth of field. So let's hop right into it. So aperture and depth of field are intimately related because we control depth of field by aperture. So just a quick review, what is aperture? Aperture is the diaphragm in the lens that controls how much light comes into the camera and hits the sensor or piece of film. So the smaller f-stop number, the bigger that opening, more light's coming in. The, the, the larger the number, the smaller that diaphragm is closed down and limits the amount of light. And this has an impact on depth of field. But first, we have to think about, well, what is depth of field? So this visual helps you put together the the aperture um, on the lens, which is up top with, with what actually, how the camera is look, focusing differently. Um, so for a given focal point, the depth of field tells, or not tells, but the depth of field defines how much of the scene is in focus, both in front of and behind the focal point. So here in this image, we have a focal point on a thistle, and at a very shallow depth of field, everything in behind, behind the image is blurred out. And that's due to a very shallow, we call that a shallow depth of field. And then over here on the right side, when we have a higher f-stop number and that aperture is closed down, you can see the thistle is still in focus, but the, the flowers behind it are also coming into focus. And so it's about how much of that scene as it goes away from the camera is, is in focus. That's really what depth of field is, and it gives us a lot of visual control to isolate our subjects. Sometimes we want everything to be in focus. Sometimes we'd like just one part of an image to be in focus to, to kind of isolate and focus on and give it more attention and detail to that area. So here's another example. Um, and here it's nice. This is a textbook example where we have um, the idea of what depth of field is. And so on the image on the right, that's the resulting image from the camera. But on the left, up here, we have a f another camera posed so we can see how far away the different subjects of A, B, and C are from the camera. And we can see what the resulting image looks like. So we have a kid in the front that's really close in the foreground. We have a kid in the middle. Um, and when then way in the back, we have a, an, older, an older adult. And everybody essentially is pretty sharp here because we have a wide depth of field. And that means in this case, the way they have this old fashioned lens is it's set up to be stopped down to F16, which is a very small aperture opening, right? So a small aperture gives you more depth of field. Now, conversely, a large aperture is going to give you less depth of field. Here we have the same scene and we've, in both of the images we focused on the kid in the middle, but this time with a shallow depth of field, he's the only part of the scene that's truly in focus. Everything else, the, the man behind is all blurred out and the boy in the front is also very soft focus. Um, and so you can see over here on the right, this is our apparent depth of field, right? Just on that middle subject of the boy and everything else is falling out. And that's really what depth of field is all about in a nutshell. We can also define depth of field as the acceptable sharpness, um, the, the area of the image that is in acceptable sharpness or what we would call in focus is another way of saying it. So here's just another visual example of the effective aperture on the photograph you might be taking. We have this we have this um, performer uh, with rings, like kind of in a, you know, on a street. And on the left, we have a very small aperture, which gives us more depth of field. So we can, we can very clearly get a sense of the street scene behind it. Um, and then on the left, we have a large aperture with less depth of field or a shallow depth of field. And we really are focused just on the performer and behind him is just kind of a, a sense of an environment, but we don't even, we can't even make out any details. 
And so you can control how much of either of these situations you would prefer um, by choosing the aperture that you would like. Um, coming back to this idea of equivalent exposure, um, where you, you as the camera operator can have various aperture and shutter speed combinations that result in the same exposure, i.e. the same total amount of light is led into the camera through the, though the visualization of the scene is very different. So here we have another textbook example of how um, the image changes based on the, ch the choices you make between shutter speed and aperture to define the way the image looks. And in this case, we have a moving object combined with a scene. And so you can either do something where having a shorter exposure, but a much, but to compensate for that very quick exposure, we have to increase the amount of light coming in through the lens, which means we have a very open aperture and that will give us a shallow depth of field. So on the left, you can tell the, the pigeons are in focus, but in the background, the park scene is, falls out of focus. And then over on the left-hand side, you have the converse of that, where you have a higher amount of depth of field. Um, things in the foreground, actually the, 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 uh, the stones or the pathway in the foreground is in focus, as well as the things in the back. But anything that's in motion is sort of blurred. So what you like depends, is, is a subjective decision, but um, you have to make the decision then on how you want the settings to be. One other, another thing to think about with depth of field is that it does not fall equally in front of and behind the point of focus. So if you're focused on that, that boy we were just talking about in that scene, and you change your aperture, say you stop it down and make it smaller so that you increase your depth of field, that depth of field, that inc increase in depth of field does not fall equally in front of him and behind him. And this, this M, graphic visualizes that. So for the same 100 millimeter lens at f2.8, we have a narrow depth of field, which is indicated by red, versus say at a, um, an f-stop of 22. It's very small, but um, and we have a much wider depth of field. But you can see that this depth of field is not equal. Um, so it, more of it is behind the image and and less of it is in front. And so you can think of this as approximately one third of that depth of field that you have will be in front of your focal point and two thirds of it will fall behind your, your focal point or your subject that you're focused on. So think about that if you're trying to pre-visualize what the scene will look like. And also remember when you're looking through your uh, DSLR, um, by definition, when you're looking through that viewfinder, the lens is opened up to the maximum aperture. So your pre-visualization of what's in focus and, um, is at the very shallowest depth of field that that lens can operate at. Um, some cameras will have a depth of field preview button, which actually stops down the lens and makes it smaller um, to the size that you have the aperture set to. And that will give you a truer, true to life uh, uh, visualization of depth of field that you're going to have. But that's not always a option for the camera. So it just sort of depend on the camera whether you can do that. But remember when you are looking, uh, you are looking at the maximum aperture opening or that lowest f-stop number. The last thing uh, we can think about just to kind of maybe make your head spin a little bit is other things that affect depth of field besides aperture. So we talked, we've talked we talked about aperture uh, in a, a lot, and that's what this first visualization shows you. Wide aperture, uh, what you're focused on is in focus, but other things fall out in front of or behind. But another, another thing that affects the depth of field is the focal length of your lens. So a, sh a long focal length will have less depth of field in comparison to a shorter focal length lens. So say a telephoto lens that has a much narrower depth of field for the given f-stop, say if you're at f5.6, that given f-stop, a telephoto will have a narrower depth of field than say a 50 millimeter lens, which is usually a normal, we consider a normal lens on a full frame DSLR style camera. And that's gonna have a wider depth of field
or deeper depth of field um, for the same f stop of say five six when we're talking about. And the last thing um, is that as you get farther away from your subject, from the distance from the camera to the subject, um, in this instance it says closer to the subject for a given for a given aperture, say and this says three feet, you're, this, this uh, woman is in focus, and then the man that's a little bit behind her is falling out of focus. But in this scenario, now the composition is different. The lens is the same, the f-stop is the same, but, um, or the aperture is the same, but in this case, she is in focus at 10 feet away, and he is also in focus now. So the further away you get uh, from your subject, the wider the depth of field appears to be. And this has to do with the physics of, or the optics of the lenses and the way that they're constructed. And if you ever have time and you can look on a focal, a, a lens and you can, and it has a focal measurement, it tells you um, how many feet you're focused at based on where you are on the, on the, on the dial um, around the lens. If you look at that and you see how those numbers are spaced apart from each other and you study it for a while, you'll see how that reflects on what I just said. So thanks for listening for depth, about depth of field. Hope you learned something and um, we'll see you for the next series.